Youssef, you're there on the ground. The Saudis keep telling us that they're getting things back on track. What are you seeing? Well, Romain, we are part of a very select group who have been allowed access, uh, the first journalists to do so. And we've been at an oil field early on in the day where some of the cruise missiles hit. And now we've moved to the Abikake Crude Oil Processing Center, which is the largest of its kind in the world. So it's really a gem in the crown of the global energy infrastructure. You can see behind me, there's this spherical tank. And they play an important role in the separation of the oil for further processing later on. Notice the puncture marks on the outer skin, the outer layer of the spherical tank, and also how there is a group of workers who are already uh, efforting uh, a recovery for this particular facility. We've been speaking to officials on the ground, and they have made it very clear that they are working around the clock to try and get these machines and the infrastructure back online. It's not just the reputation of these individual bits and pieces of the infrastructure that's at stake, but it's the kingdom's reputation as a reliable energy supplier. So it's, it's, it's quite a big deal. Uh, I want you to imagine here that 18 drones, a swarm of drones came in just about a week ago in the early hours of the morning of 4 a.m. and hit precise targets like the one behind me. Guy, Romain. Youssef, is there a raised military presence, a sense maybe that the Saudis are upping their defence programmes to ensure that this doesn't happen again? Uh, there's no indication of that. I mean, when we spoke to the finance minister in the last 24 hours, he made it clear that if more spending was needed for defence, that that would happen. Uh, here around the facility, okay. I mean, look, guy. Uh, this is the kind of security you'd expect at any major energy infrastructure location. I mean, a very wide perimeter, lots of military police, lots of cameras. And for us, going through these areas, only bits and pieces where we're allowed to film and under very, very tight control and surveillance. I want to also show you actually an, an actual part, if you can join me just for a minute here, on the ground that they have been able to uh, carve out. And again, this shows you the shell and the kind of impact the strength of the impact and the size of some of these missiles and drones that were inbound about a week ago. But it really raises the bigger question, Guy, and we've spoken about this. What kind of coordinated response may we get from the international community? How much appetite is there to do something against this?